You might have also heard about something called digital wallets when it comes to cryptocurrencies. So what's that all about? While a physical wallet that we keep in our pocket or purse may contain paper money or coins, when it comes to cryptocurrencies, the currency is actually never held by the owner, but rather remains on the blockchain and can never leave the blockchain to go anywhere else. So really, a digital wallet doesn't hold the currency, but only holds your private key, which is created when you create your account. Your private key is not backed up on a server somewhere, so it cannot be recovered if it's lost. And that's a good thing, as anyone who has your private key can create digital signatures and spend your cryptocurrency. So you should never share your private key with anyone. Each digital wallet will also have a public key, which is a string of letters and numbers such as the long string you see on the screen here. This is an address that will appear in various blocks within the blockchain as your transactions take place. No visible records of who did what transaction with whom, only the number of a wallet. So in theory, while the owner of an address is unknown, it is possible to trace transactions on a blockchain by the public key and it's also possible to create a profile of someone based on their behavior on the blockchain. Hence, cryptocurrencies are not truly anonymous, but rather pseudonymous. And what I mean by pseudonymous can be demonstrated on the next couple of screens. The first is the latest blocks on the Bitcoin blockchain that I've grabbed from the Blockstream Explorer webpage. As Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are decentralized ledgers, it should be no surprise that anyone can see every block on this permissionless blockchain ever since its inception. I've chosen to pull up a transaction from block 693122, the second one from the top if you ever feel like pulling up the same transaction. You can see that the holder of roughly 10.105 bitcoins has decided to pay the public key ending in 91M 5BTC, which is the short code for bitcoin. The holder, whose public key ends in 4K9, now only has 5.102 bitcoins left after paying the transaction fee. So while the identities of 91M and 4K9 are not known, you can follow the trail of BTC as it moves from each of these holders. By examining every transaction that a holder engages in, it's possible to form a picture of the holder. And it's this methodology that law enforcement used to track cryptocurrency transactions up and down the blockchain. So what might some of these digital wallets look like? Well, the first type is mobile. This is an app that runs and stores your private keys for your cryptocurrencies on your smartphone, allowing ease of access to pay for goods or services, trade and buy crypto directly from your phone. The downside of a mobile wallet is threefold. Number one is fraud. There are lots of scams and counterfeit wallet apps that try to steal your private keys. Number two, mobile apps depend on a small number of trusted nodes to transact and verify their coins. So they're sometimes called light wallets, and these run counter to the trustless nature of cryptocurrencies. And number three, smartphones are not immune to hacks and malware that target your private keys. The next type are web wallets, which store your private keys on a server, which are always online and controlled by a third party, such as a cryptocurrency exchange. Much like a mobile wallet, web wallets allow users to access their funds on the go as long as they can connect to the internet, so it can be very convenient. However, there are also drawbacks, namely placing your precious private keys with a third party. There have been many recent examples of exchanges and other web wallets falling victims to hackers or shutting down and essentially stealing their users' funds. Even if the third party is completely safe and honorable, it is still based on the user logging in with a user ID and password, both of which can be easily stolen by sophisticated hackers. Next are desktop wallets which are programs for your computer that store your private keys on your computer's hard drive. These wallets will be more secure than mobile and web wallets, since you don't rely on a third party to store your precious private keys. Desktop wallets also cater to different needs of their users, such as more anonymity, security, or convenience, for example. 
However, this sort of wallet still needs to be connected to the internet should you ever want to buy or use your cryptocurrency. Also, there are some programs that download the entire crypto blockchain onto your computer and may require a fast internet connection and lots of disk space. Now we move on to cold wallets. Whereas the previous three all needed to be connected to the internet, they're called hot wallets. The next couple are purely storage solutions that are not online, hence they're classified as cold wallets. The first cold wallet is a hardware wallet. These secure physical devices look like a larger USB key and sometimes have biometric features. They are believed to be the most secure way of storing any amount of crypto. When you use or receive cryptocurrency, you then need to connect the hardware wallet to your computer and run software to move the currency. Also, as it is a pure storage device, they are more immune to malware and when not connected to the internet, absolutely safe from hackers. However, like any wallet, you need to properly secure the hardware wallet and not misplace it. Additionally, there are fake hardware wallets in circulation that will steal your private keys, so always be careful where you purchase your hardware wallets from. The last type of wallet is to have it on some sort of physical media. While in the early days we did see physical digital coins that could be preloaded with cryptocurrency, these forms are not often seen nowadays except on stock photos. What is the most hacker proof is to have your private key on a physical document that is completely offline. These can be printed as QR codes so you can quickly scan them into a hot wallet to make a transaction. Once on a physical document, the important part is to safely store that document, for instance, in a dry, safe place like a safety deposit box. Regardless of which wallet you may choose, it's important to make sure you remember your user ID and password to access your private key. The most famous cautionary tale is that of Stefan Thomas, a German-born programmer living in San Francisco. He stored the private keys to just a little over 7,000 Bitcoin on a physical wallet called an iron key. Unfortunately for Mr. Thomas, he lost the password he used for his iron key and has used up eight out of the 10 chances an iron key user gets before it locks up and encrypts the contents on the drive forever. Please feel free to check what 7,002 Bitcoin is worth when you're taking this course, but at the time of this writing, Mr. Thomas has two more guesses before he loses 275 million US dollars worth of Bitcoin forever.